This video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. Why are we so enthralled with the Akatsuki as a collective community? Is it because they're comprised of a bunch of very different characters who all represent different reasons for going to war? Is it because their outfits were really cool? Is it because they were very powerful? Or is it because they represent something truly deep and something we can all understand? See, the Akatsuki are a physical representation of one person's journey. A journey of a child who starts with a massive amount of power and a hope to create peace for the universe. And they're slow to send into becoming somebody mired with grief and anger at the world. The person, of course, we're talking about is Nagato. Because without Nagato, the Akatsuki most likely never would have formed. Was it truly his fault that the Akatsuki formed into the Akatsuki that we all know and love? Or was he genuinely pushed into it by others? Was his want to spread pain across the world to equalize everybody's emotions warranted? Or was he simply a man trying to get revenge on a world that dashed his dreams? We'll answer all those questions and a whole lot more today. But before we get into that, guys, please, for me, like this video, subscribe to the page, and Hit that noti bell. And while you guys are clicking away on those buttons, guys, I have three other YouTube pages. NC Gamer 23, where instead of talking anime, I play video games. Hammer's Collection, where instead of talking anime, while sitting in this chair, I talk it while building giant statues. And the Weeb Commander, where instead of talking Naruto, I talk quite literally any other anime. Before we get into all that, guys, today we gotta talk about our favorite reoccurring sponsor to the page, Raid Shadow Legends. You guys have heard me talk about Raid Shadow Legends a bunch of times, and that's because Raid Shadow Legends is taking over the gaming world. Raid Shadow Legends is is truly the first game to bring a console level gaming experience to your mobile device. But why is Raid taking over the gaming world? Because Raid allows you to play your way. Raid has hundreds of artifacts to equip on 600 total champions, giving you an almost limitless amount of ways to raid your way. But why get into Raid now? Well, Raid is constantly updating and adding new content to its game. And this month it added a brand new feature called Awakening in a brand new dungeon called the Iron Twins Fortress. But these Iron Twins aren't pushovers, but if you're good enough to defeat them, you'll see a massive payoff. On top of that, this brand new feature called Awakening allows you to awaken your heroes. Essentially, it allows you to choose a powerful blessing to bestow upon your hero to change how they might perform in combat. And these Awakenings don't only change how your hero might do in combat, but they also apply different cosmetic looks to your heroes. And take it from me, I love the way that these Awakenings look, and there's a massive variety of them. But these Awakenings just add another layer on the infinite ways that you can raid your way. But that's not even the biggest news. No, Raid has made everybody's favorite new hero. You see, everybody's favorite champion in Raid is Death Knight. But Raid has decided to take it one step further and create the ultimate Death Knight. He's perfect, he's powerful, he's poised, and the best part is that everybody can get him for free. All you have to do is log into Raid and play seven days between now and October 27th. And with that very easy process done, Ultimate Death Knight will be yours. Hey, maybe I'll see you in the tag team arenas because it's quickly become my favorite part of the game. I love the ability to put champions against champions with your friends. There's truly never been a better time to join Raid, but there's even more. You can use the DK Rises promo code to get a bunch of free items and immediately level your strongest hero to level 50. But if this isn't enough for you guys, you can click the link in my description, my pinned comment, or scan the QR code on the screen right now to get $30 worth of in-game bonuses when you sign up for Raid today. Yeah, that's right. You'll get a free epic champion, 200k silver, one energy refill, one XP boost, and one ancient shard so you can summon any champion as soon as you get in game. All this treasure will be waiting for you here. Just scan the QR code on the screen or click the link in my description or pinned comment and I'll see you in game. The supposed child of prophecy, a dual Rinnegan wielder, one of the only Uzumakis left on the face of the earth. How did he go from a child living in the hidden rain to the leader of the Akatsuki? And along that journey, who did he truly become and what did he represent? You see, while most people understand the base concepts that Nagato stands for, pain, equalizing the world through shared grief, a lot of people miss the greater and deeper concepts that he stands for and what his role in the Akatsuki is meant to represent. But that's my job, so let's start these videos off in the way that we usually start these videos off at the beginning. Fortunately for us, Nagato is one of the only characters in the Akatsuki that we know the child childhood of, and that's because his childhood is literally devastating. You see, Nagato was born in the Hidden Rain Village, specifically in a small village outside of the main cityscape, and he was born to two parents, Fuso and Issei. Now, we know that Fuso was an Uzumaki because she had red hair, but we're not entirely sure that Issei was an Uzumaki because he had black hair. Nagato's parents were the rare 
kind of incredibly good people. Fuso, Nagato's mother was a nurse, and Issei, Nagato's father, was a doctor. And since their country was the battlefield for the entirety of the Second Great Shinobi World's War, Fuso and Issei were providing humanitarian relief to the battlefields. That is to say that they're providing aid for both civilians and shinobi. In the middle of a war that was ravaging not only their entire nation, but their own little village, they were making sure those affected by the war were helped. That is until one night, a couple of Konoha ninja broke into their battle-damaged house looking for food. Fuso and Issei, understanding that Konoha ninja usually means death for civilians, tried to sneak away. Specifically, they tried to get Nagato and themselves to sneak out without the Konoha ninjas noticing them. However, the Konoha ninjas, being ninjas, noticed people sneaking. And therefore, Fuso and Issei tried to draw the attention from the ninjas onto themselves so Nagato could escape. The Konoha ninjas mistook the two of them as enemy ninjas, attacked them, and quickly killed them. However, after killing them, they realized that both Fuso and Issei were civilians and tried to apologize to Nagato. That's right, their first reaction was to kill on sight and then ask questions. Nagato's entire life has been war-torn. He was born during the Second Great Shinobi World's War when his country was in shambles. His only light were his two parents who were acting as humanitarian aid relief for both shinobis and citizens. Indirectly in front of his eyes, two incredibly good people who committed their lives to incredibly good efforts got cut down because shinobi were looking for food. In a moment, blinded by anger, Nagato awoke to his Rinnegan, and using the abilities of the Rinnegan, almost unknowingly killed the two shinobi. And this, I believe, is the true beginning of Nagato as we know him. Because when you look at the situation objectively, the only reason that the Konoha shinobi were ever drawn to his parents and Nagato is because Nagato knocked over a pot. When the pot crashed, the Konoha shinobi realized that they were trying to sneak away, and Nagato's father rushed to the shinobi to allow his mother and Nagato to escape. And this is the dichotomy of Nagato, something we're going to talk about a lot today. You see, because when you look at the death of Nagato's parents, there's basically two ways you can look at it. You see, when you look at the situation, you can either blame it on Nagato for knocking over the pot or the Konoha Shinobis for acting without thinking. Me personally, I would never blame the child who just watched his parents die. Just him knocking over the pot isn't really the problem. It's the fact that the Konoha didn't just stabbed his parents in the chest. And instead of blaming himself like he possibly could have, he decided to blame the Konoha Ninja, which ingrained in his mind that Konoha's peaceful nation was built on the back of murdered civilians. That is to say that the ever-loving, peaceful nation of Konoha was built on the deaths of thousands. And it's at this moment that Nagato represents radicalization. Something that we refer to as the cycle of hate in Naruto is also known as radicalization in the real world. A moment where somebody is put through something horrific like the death of a family member that radicalizes them to a certain ideal. And we know as humans, there's few emotions stronger than hate. And it was this hate that fueled Nagato to kill those two Konoha Shinobi. And Nagato is a very scary person to radicalize on account of the fact that Madara had given him the Rinnegan at a very young age. See, the one thing that happened long before Nagato's parents were murdered in front of him is that Madara found a way to get his Rinnegan into Nagato's face. Nagato being the only Uzumaki young enough at the time that Madara thought would still be around by the time he got reincarnated. And Madara, understanding the massive amount of chakra that one needs in order to wield two Rinnegan, knew that these eyes could only go to an Uzumaki. And thus, Nagato was chosen to be the receiver of said Rinnegan. As the how he got those Rinnegans in Nagato? Did he use Space Time Ninjutsu? Did he use Black Setsu? We, <laughs> we don't know. But we do know that using the strength of the Rinnegan given to him by Madara, that Nagato would take his revenge. At least as a young child, that's what he thought he would do. But there's a little thing called the prioritization of needs in humans. And long before one can plan to overthrow an entire village, they also have to do some important things to keep themselves alive. So after killing two people and burying his own parents, Nagato had to go out and look for food. However, since the hidden rain was in the midst of an incredibly grueling war, there was no food or shelter for Nagato to find anywhere. Once again, reinforcing the idea that Konoha's idea of peace is built on dead bodies, one of which he thought would be his own very soon. And as Nagato looked for either food or shelter, nobody around him would help him. And one day when he collapsed of hunger, he was found by Konan and Yahiko. You see, Konan and Yahiko, just like Nagato, were also orphans. An incredibly common story in the Hidden Rain at the time because Shinobi and civilian alike were being wiped off the face of the map. And upon coming together, they were able to do anything that they possibly could to scrounge for food or shelter. And once they had enough food and shelter, they began to dream of the day that the three of them would be in power and would be able to eliminate war. But the three of them failed to realize somehow in the midst of a battlefield though, was human nature. And this was mostly due, in fact, to Yahiko's blind optimism. You see, Nagato, in the moment of killing those Ushinobi who killed his parents, realized that the idea of peace is often 
hypocritical. We have to invade this other country in order to make it a peaceful nation. Things like that. But as the Ame orphans began to sat down and dream Yahiko's dream, they themselves wanted to eliminate war. Through what means, though, they never truly established. But they did understand that in order to establish this peace, the three of them would need to become ninja, implying that they understood that in order to establish peace, force would be needed. And thus, in a small sense, buying into Konoha's ideology, something that only the bright spirit of Yahiko could convince Nagato to do. And it's important for later on reasons to realize that Nagato only adopted Yahiko's mentality. And this is because Nagato had had the privilege of being raised by incredible parents who were bright and trying to help the world. And more likely than not, he saw some of that in Yahiko. However, in order to become ninja, they realized they would have to be trained by ninja. So they approached the legendary Sanin on their way back from a defeat against Hanzo of the Salamander. And it's in the three legendary Sanin that the Ame orphans saw the three kinds of people. Neutral, as Tsunade basically ignored them. Evil, as Orochimaru offered to kill them to put them out of their misery and good in Jiraiya, who offered to help them find their way and make themselves sufficient. You see, Jiraiya on his way out of the hidden rain looked around and realized the level of destruction that they had brought to a small country. A small country caught in the crossfire of much larger nations battling it out. It was simply the geological misfortune of being located between the hidden leaf, hidden stone, and hidden sand. So Jiraiya found a place for all of them to live and immediately taught them ways to survive, like how to fish. But Jiraiya, who was going through his own kind of crisis about war, decided to not teach them ninjutsu. See, Jiraiya also started to see what they had done in the Second Great Shinobi World War as hypocritical. And thus, the further spreading of ninjutsu would only fan the flames of war down the line. However, all of this changed when the Ame orphans were out scavenging for food. While out on this task, they were assaulted by ninjas from the Hidden Stone. And once again, the loss of Nagato's parents flashed in front of his eyes. However, Nagato now knew he had a weapon, the very weapon he used to kill the Konoha Shinobi. And therefore, before he would have to relive losing his parents all over again, he killed the Iwa Shinobi. See, this represents a large step forward for Nagato. Not necessarily towards the good, but forward nonetheless. You see, Nagato had been the victim of war, and he had lost ones he loved, and he wasn't about to do it again. Therefore, he activated his Rinnegan before he became a victim again and stepped ahead of the conflict, setting the idea in his head that killing those that want to kill him is the way to keep those you love safe. Planting the tiniest seed of a thought that maybe peace as he understands it is built on the bodies of others. And after Nagato had killed the Iwa Shinobi, Jiraiya showed up. And upon seeing the scene and seeing Nagato's Rinnegan and being reminded that Hagoromo also held the Rinnegan, he decided to teach them ninjutsu. I wish I could say that Jiraiya changed his mind because he realized that the best way for them to protect themselves in a world mired with war is ninjutsu. And thus Jiraiya also got over his conflict of the hypocritical nature of peace. But it was mostly because he saw the Rinnegan and thought, oh, Hagoromo. And after the adrenaline had died down, Nagato felt remorse over killing the Iwa Shinobi. But it was at this point that Jiraiya instilled in him that sometimes you have to spill blood to protect those closest to you, stating specifically that sometimes violence and pain is required to protect your loved ones. Once again, sowing the seeds of an ideology Nagato would pick up much later in his life. But fortunately for Nagato, he still had Yahiko and Jiraiya. And Jiraiya believed Nagato to be the reincarnation of Hagoromo and therefore the person that would usher the world into peace much like Hagoromo had done. And he instilled this ideology into Nagato, pushing him away from his radicalized thoughts, giving him hope that with the massive amount of power that he had been gifted, he would be able to change a world that nobody else could. But you know what they say, hope is a dangerous thing. So Jiraiya stayed with the Ame orphans for three years and taught them all kinds of ninjutsu. And because Nagato had the Rinnegan and therefore had the Sharingan's abilities, the copy movements and ninjutsu, he caught onto everything quick. And once the Ame orphans were able to defeat one of Jiraiya's shadow clones, he decided, well, they've taught them enough. And he decided to head back to Konoha, confident that they would be able to make a lasting change in the Hidden Rain Village. And upon Jiraiya's leaving, Yahiko, Konan, and Nagato created the Akatsuki. And as the Akatsuki, they began to advocate for the ending of war. And because they were doing this in a village that had recently just been basically destroyed by war, they gained a bunch of followers. But the problem was, in order to advocate for war, the Akatsuki also had to be hired out as mercenaries, meaning that they were basically partaking in wars for money to advocate for their campaign to end war. And thus, the problems with the Akatsuki somewhat began to arise. As the Akatsuki began to grow more and more, they became famous, and eventually Obito reached out to them, offering to help them in their pursuits to end war war and help Nagato master the Rinnegan. You see, because Obito's entire intention was to get Nagato on his side because he needed Nagato's Rinnegan in order to A, control the Ten Tails Husk, aka the Ghetto Statue, and B, bring Madara back to life. However, Yaiko refused Obito, believing that he was trying to use the Akatsuki to further his own goals, which 
he was. But here's the thing, and this is a common misconception about the early days of the Akatsuki. And therefore, it's a common misconception about the early days of Nagato. The Akatsuki, while advocating for peace, were essentially doing nothing different from any of the other major ninja villages. Major ninja villages are heavily reliant on ninja work, sending out ninjas to smaller villages so they can make money and bring that back to the village. In a sense, every major village hires out their ninjas as mercenaries. And Konoha is no exception to this rule. However, Konoha has had a long track record of trying to advocate for peace. Hashirama did it, Tobirama did it, Naruto has done it. So in a sense, in the early days, the Akatsuki were becoming a much smaller little satellite Konoha. However, smaller wasn't lasting very long because the Akatsuki were growing members and power every single day. So much so that when they became famous within the Hidden Reign, Hanzo actually reached out to them to help them with their furtherment of peace because Hanzo himself also wanted peace between all nations. However, once again, human nature got in the way. You see, Danzo Shimura, the Shadow Hokage of Hiruzen, had heard of a growing organization in the Hidden Reign, a place, mind you, Konoha had quite literally just pseudo lost a war to. And this organization was not only advocating for the end of war, something Danzo absolutely did not want, they were also strengthening the power of a nation that they had just fought. So Danzo realizing that if Hanzo the Salamander and the Akatsuki came together, they would be a nigh unstoppable force, decided to pit them against each other, and sowed seeds of doubt in Hanzo's mind that the Akatsuki were gunning for his power, which is why when Hanzo and the Akatsuki met to finalize their deal to work together to further peace, the Akatsuki were jumped by a combination of ninjas under Hanzo and root members under Danzo. And not only did they attack them, they also had Konon as a hostage. And Danzo and Hanzo demanded that Nagato kill Yahiko, because Yahiko was the head of the Akatsuki. And they figured if the head of the Akatsuki was gone, the Akatsuki would crumble. However, Yahiko wouldn't allow Nagato to have his death on his conscience so Yahiko threw himself onto Nagato's kunai. And once again, Nagato is transported to one of his earliest memories, the loss of his parents. In almost the exact same situation, people thriving to change the world from the inside out, just like his parents did, are killed by Konoha Shinobi. Or at least they're put in a situation where they end up dead by Konoha Shinobi. And just like with the moment of his parents' death, Nagato flies into a rage, summons the ghetto statue with the power of his Rinnegan and kills everyone present except for Hanzo and Danzo. Twice now in Nagato's life, he had met people who were committed to keeping him alive, people who loved him, people who were striving for a better world, and the world had struck them down for it. Twice now, Nagato got caught in the crossfires of bigger powers than himself, battling it out. And as Nagato laid on a field of freshly laid corpses, one of which was Yahiko's, he realized something. That the sentimentality that he felt on the night he murdered his parents' murderers was the correct one all along. The hatred that he felt for the hypocritical nature of trying to establish peace through war coursed through his veins. And he realized the true peace, the peace that the Ame orphans dreamed of, could and would never be established in a world where humans still existed. That those who have never lost anything such as he has will truly never understand what war looks like. And in this sense, Nagato represents thousands of people every single day. Every time a nation goes to war with a concept like radical Islam, every fighter or innocent civilian you kill radicalizes three of the people that they love. True unity, Nagato realizes, can only be achieved through common suffering. And this is truly the moment we see Nagato born. But it's also one of the most interesting and compelling moments in Nagato's history. Because while he does represent radicalization in the way that it can continue this so-called cycle of hatred, he's also acting in such a way as to close said cycle of hatred. But in reality, he's not. See, Nagato was radicalized to his pain ideal. And while in reality, on the surface level, it might look as though he is in fact trying to end the cycle of hatred. But inflicting pain on others, specifically Konoha, could never truly end the cycle of hatred. And this is obviously something he could realize. And thus he's deluded himself to believe that through common suffering, the cycle of hatred will close. And this is meant to represent the extremes that some can be radicalized to through suffering, a level of disconnection from reality that one can go through. And this is further evidenced by the fact that after this fight, when he's immobilized, he creates the sixth path of pain. And for the first path, the Deva path, he uses Yahiko's corpse. He does this because he still wants Yahiko to lead the Akatsuki. And thus he's metaphorically forcing his friend who wouldn't have believed in the mission that Nagato was moving towards to lead the Akatsuki. His grief towards his loss directed him in a direction that those who he lost would never want him to go, especially when he used Yahiko's body to meet with Obito and accept 
his offer. And it was at this point that the Akatsuki began to fill itself up with S-ranked missing ninja and began to, on a grand in much more sinister scale, take mercenary work that would fund their future dreams the Eye of the Moon plan. See, Nagato liked the Eye of the Moon plan because it meant peace for the entire world. However, what's always confused me about Nagato's involvement in the Eye of the Moon plan is the fact that if the Eye of the Moon plan worked, that pain wouldn't be spread universally. In fact, everybody would live in their own little version of heaven, which I feel as though more aligns with the ideologies of Yahiko than this new reformed Nagato. Now, that's not me saying that Yahiko would have taken the Eye of the Moon plan. He literally already shut down the offer. But we're talking about a heaven here with no suffering, not something the six paths of pain were necessarily interested in. And after Nagato headed down this dark path and led the Akatsuki for a number of years, he still had some revenge he needed to take. And this moment, I feel, truly solidifies what Nagato stood for. Not the ending of the cycle of hatred, not even trying to find peace, simply getting even. Because somewhere down the line after the formation of this new Akatsuki, Nagato staged a civil war in the Hidden Rain. And him and Conan led this civil war against Hanzo the Salamander. However, Hanzo had spent years after the murder of Yaiko sheltered in his room, worried about losing his power, and he had lost the majority of his fighting prowess. Because Hanzo had shut himself in and lost his power in the respect of Ame, the majority of them riled behind Nagato and Kona. And with this power and the power of Nagato and the Six Paths of Pain, eventually Hanzo was cornered. And as Hanzo quivered in fear of the much stronger foe that he was facing, Nagato used the Deva Path, aka Yahiko, to kill him. And thus in that moment, Nagato took revenge, for Yahiko. And with Hanzo's death, Nagato controlled the Hidden Rain. However, Nagato was afraid that somebody would try to overthrow him. So Nagato decided to kill anybody even remotely related to Hanzo. We're talking friends, family, people he met once or twice. If you knew Hanzo, you were murdered. And once again, through an expression of guilt, Nagato has gotten even. But one could argue anybody who lived in the Hidden Rain during the Second Great Shinobi World War, i.e. all of the people that he just killed, had already known their fair share of pain. And while obviously in the last couple of years, Hanzo had become the shell of the man he was, did not mean that everybody he ever knew needed to die. Because at the end of the day, those were civilians loyal to the Hidden Rain, something that Nagato had took a lot of pride in. And as the villagers quivered in fear of this new god that had just taken over the regime of leading the Hidden Rain, he reveled in the power and the worship that they gave him. Nagato enjoyed the fear of others, and not even just the fear from Konoha, the fear from citizens who had backed him in a civil war that he had won. Nagato didn't care about ending the cycle of hatred. Nagato cared about killing the people who hurt him. Nagato cared about making sure that nobody ever stood up to him again. Nagato cared about becoming a god. You see, Nagato heard in his mind what Jiraiya had told him a long time ago. How he believed he was the reincarnation of Hagaromo, the sage of six paths, the god that unified the entire earth. But somewhere along the line, the idea of Hagaromo got bastardized in Nagato's mind, and he must took fear for faith. Nagato wasn't going around killing as many people as he possibly could so everybody felt a universal sense of pain. He was just trying to spread fear. And from the ashes of the survivors, those who would look upon him would feel said fear. And as he rose to the top of the world's power, nobody would dare act against him. And this is further evidenced by the fact that he went along with the Eye of the Moon plan. It's not like they told Nagato that they're going to rip out his Renegon and give him to Madara. For all Nagato knew, they were going to enact infinite Tsukiyomi and he would get to live as God King Emperor over a world of peaceful, subservient people. Because if Nagato truly, truly wanted to create peace, why would he act against his own people? Other than the fact that he had deluded himself to a level of radicalization that only Yahiko or Naruto could talk him out of. Going so far into these delusions as to kill the man who saved his life. Shortly, Konoha had crossed Nagato twice. Nagato chose to ignore the heart of a shinobi who simply wanted to see these children survive in Jiraiya. Almost everything that Nagato ever learned, everything that Nagato ever bastardized to use in a ploy to gain godship control over the entire entire world was taught to him by Jiraiya. And yet, as Nagato drove the final chakra rod into Jiraiya's back, he barely batted an eye. But why did Nagato feel no emotion towards Jiraiya? Well, it's because Nagato felt as though Jiraiya abandoned the Ame orphans. See, after Jiraiya had seen that the Ame orphans could defeat his shadow clone, he basically disappeared without a word. See, Jiraiya didn't want the Ame orphans to be relying on him and wanted them to set upon the world to change it as he thought they could. So he left without saying goodbye. At least this is what most people say. However, many 
times during the early days of the Akatsuki, we see the Ame orphans talking about how they would like to meet Jiraiya once again, claiming that he would be proud of them and how they want to show him their progress, implying that in the moment, at least before the death of Yahiko, that none of them felt hatred towards Jiraiya for his leaving. And it wasn't until Nagato and then therefore Konan were radicalized, they began to have hate for Jiraiya. So what true reason could they have to hate Jiraiya outside of the fact that he was from Konoha and thus represented everything that they believe had gone wrong in their lives? I truly believe that this is why Nagato decided to kill Jiraiya. Jiraiya's time in the Hidden Reign had changed in its meaning to Nagato over the years. While he was young, Jiraiya represented the person who taught them how to live, taught them ninjutsu, taught them everything that they need to know in order to survive in a cruel world. And as Nagato grew up, he realized that Jiraiya truly was simply just somebody spreading pain throughout the duration of the Second Great Shinobi War and was trying to put a bandage over their heart by raising the Ame orphans. At least, this is the ideology he held. But also, I largely believe that Nagato felt as though killing Jiraiya was a symbolic end to his life before Yahiko's death. A physical severing of any part of him that still believed in the old notions of being able to create peace through any means outside of pain. In a sense, killing the human side of him to allow the god side of him to reign supreme. And this sentiment was fueled even further as he floated above Konoha, channeling Chakra to his Devapath to destroy a village that destroyed his village and kill everybody who was even closely related to those who had given him pain. You see, Nagato didn't have to destroy the entirety of Konoha to find Naruto. However, Nagato was taking the same approach to Konoha as he did to those related to Hanzo. Anybody even remotely related to those who spread pain to him would be cut down. Because here's the thing, wiping Konoha off the map doesn't leave anybody left to feel pain. But what it does do is so fear in the minds of anybody who would ever think to go against you. But after everything's said and done and the fighting is settled between Naruto and Nagato, people are so upset about the fact that Naruto was able to talk Nagato out of his ideals. Essentially, people make fun of the situation because they say that Naruto is just like, I was also sad and Nagato is like, bet and brings everyone back to life. But if you look at the situation at that base of a level, of course, it's not going to make that much sense to you. It isn't until you realize that Nagato didn't even truly believe in the ideals that he was spouting that it begins to make sense that Naruto could turn him from said ideals. See, Naruto didn't make Nagato realize that spreading pain across the world wasn't a good idea. Naruto made Nagato realize that Nagato wasn't even truly reaching for his own ideals. Naruto made Nagato realize that he was doing more to continue the cycle of hatred than he would ever do to stop it. That his bloodlust in need for revenge was the actual representation of the cycle he was trying to close. And that Nagato had strayed so far from the ideals of those he loved and the humanitarian efforts of his parents and Conan and Yahiko that he didn't recognize who he was anymore. And that's why Nagato used Reni Rebirth to bring everyone back to life. Not because Naruto said he was sad too, or because his parents died too, or because he went on a swing. Because Nagato got lost. And in that loss, he mistook revenge for progress. And in acquiring the power of a god, he lost his humanity. And that is who Nagato was. But what do I know? I'm just a dude talking on the internet. If you guys agree with any of my sentimentality or my thoughts on Nagato, tell me in the comments below. And while you're down there, guys, please, for me, like this video, subscribe to the page, and hit that noti bell. Listen, I'm not gonna sit here and talk about all the reasons that Konan should have given Naruto the Rinnegan the second Nagato died, but I could.